Welcome to the Ab Astro podcast. Today we have with us a uh, historian of astrology, Jean-Patrice Baudet. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Professor Baudet uh, is, is a mark in the history of astrology. Uh, he is a professor of history currently at the University of Oplian and has quite a, a large and extensive work on the history of astrology, divination practices, especially in medieval, in the context of medieval France. Um, and we will put a link uh, on the description to all of the professor's work on this regard because it's quite vast and quite interesting. And it has been, uh, we must say personally, a reference. a reference to us in terms of, of, of a guidance to this kind of study. Um, so, Professor, welcome again. And... Um, let us know a little bit about uh, your work uh, and how you got into the history of, of astrology. Uh. Um, in, I read the Recueil des plus célèbres astrologues uh, in the edition, which is a, a history of uh, astrologers from the beginning to the end of the of the 15th century written by a, a, a people who was called Simon de Far but I am not sure his his uh, uh, that is uh, his real name I think it's a nickname mm -hmm. uh, and it is quite problematic because I have no uh, document about him before uh, 1485 mm -hmm. and he's born around 1444. He was a, a court astrologer, mm, not so educated superficially, I think, uh, in, 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 uh, in medicine, uh, which is quite an exception at this time, because most of the astrologer uh, are mostly educated before in, in uh, arts and medicine at this time, especially in Italy. Uh, so he has some problem. He had some very big problem uh, when he received uh, the King Charles VIII in uh, 1490 in his uh, um, home, in his hostel, in his uh, library, visiting his library and. Uh, listening the the questions uh, of uh, Charles the, the eight uh, at the November uh, 1490 uh, and uh, uh, he was accused to have uh, to be too eloquent and uh, astrologically speaking, and uh, uh, he was accused to have a family spirit. Uh, that means uh, a spirit, uh, a little devil uh, with a divinatory power. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a great part, an important, an important part of his library was confiscated, and he was obliged uh, to answer by uh, uh, an apologetic history of astrology, which is very problematic on a uh, uh, historical point of view, and uh, where he mixed uh, uh, historiographical sources and uh, uh, scientific sources, and uh, in a very problematic way uh, on a point, uh, on a point of view positive uh, on a po positive point of view uh, on a psychologic uh, point of view it's very interesting because you have all the kind of forgery total forgery half forgery uh, very partial forgery and not forgery at all when the 
uh, apologetical uh, task is not so important for him. Uh, that is, in astronomy, uh, on, in astronomy, he's quite relatively reliable, uh, much more than on astrology. So it was a, a way to go into uh, his library, which is partly kept, partly preserved in uh, about 35 manuscripts in, in Paris, in Bibliothèque, Bibliothèque Nationale, and it was also most, uh, mostly a, a problem of historiography. Uh, my uh, my uh, di director of PhD was Bernard Guenet, who is a very, which was, uh, who was a very uh, brilliant history of uh, of history, of, uh, of uh, producing history. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two other members of the jury were Emmanuel Poole and Guy Bourgeois. Uh, Guy Bourgeois was very, uh, was married with uh, uh, the Spanish uh, uh, people and uh, was very fond about uh, uh, the history of the uh, uh, Pen uh, Iberian uh, Peninsula. And um, both of us were very, very useful for me for publishing the, 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 the history of uh, Simon de Far and uh, to publish also the, the catalog and the explanation of the content of his library. So I, I was uh, fixed largely on the material around Simon de Far, and then uh, I, uh, at the beginning, uh, about 15 years ago, I published a book about uh, history, magic, and divination in Europe, 12th century, 15th century, uh, which was my, my subject of uh, habilitation. Professor, um, I have read the books, your books, and uh, one thing I noticed is uh, you uh, have an extensive knowledge of astrology as a cultural um, factor, as a cultural element, astrology in political um, context and everything, but you also have a remarkable knowledge of the inner works of astrology. Yes. You yeah. also know uh, the rules and you also know how it works internally. Um, and yeah. this is quite remarkable in a, a historian because uh, sometimes the historians tend to focus on the external uh, part of Absolutely. the Absolutely. That's, that's what I wanted to say. I think if it is possible, and it's really difficult, of course, it's a, a, an investigation, very, very difficult, uh, we have to, as soon as possible, uh, to have a, a, an external and an internal point of view. And it's with both that we can have something really uh, progressive for the history of, uh, of uh, astronomy and astrology. Uh, we can separate astronomy from uh, astrology, of course. So the, the substratum, the astronomical substratum, it's very important. And uh, it's possible uh, also, sometimes it's, it's also very difficult to, to have, a, 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 to, to get a, 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 a certain knowledge of how uh, the, the the astrologer work with white uh, with uh, sources and to adapt his sources uh, according to the political uh, context to to the uh, the pression of the powers. Uh, ecclesiastical and laical powers, etc. So, uh, I totally agree with you. As if it, uh, 
my main purpose is that one. And, uh, but it's really, I, I, I know that it's really, really difficult. And uh, there are historians, there are many historians who are uh, mainly internalists, uh, others a majority, especially on this field, which is very problematic on a technical point of view, uh, externalist. I try to be both, but uh, of course it's not possible to be both on all the fields. So I, I try to be both on the different fields uh, I study, especially astrology. But uh, it's a permanent uh, uh, work uh, to get back to sources, to and uh, there are many problems, as you say, as you know, of addition of uh, texts which are uh, very uh, insufficient. Yes, yes, yes. We we are having more and more translations coming in uh, nowadays, but uh, at a certain point, there, there there are not yet enough uh, <laughs> enough sources edited properly, uh, edited in academic uh, with an academic filter, so that we can really understand. What are these practitioners reading and basing their work on? So, so I think that's uh, we oh, oh, we totally agree with you that that's uh, that's a work that has to be done, and it's a work that the Astra Project uh, uh, will attempt to do, and will 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 work on it, uh, which is the understanding of the practices. What are they doing? What are the techniques? What are the methodologies? How do these methodologies connect with astronomy and astronomical knowledge? And so instruments. The instruments, yeah. they are, all, all of this yeah. is, is in the same bundle, uh, as and, you said. And also, also the study of the methods and the concepts throughout time, because <laughs> it's so important to understand why is it that this method uh, remained uh, throughout the history of astrology and other methods um, equally no, no. complex or interesting, they just disappeared. So also this, uh, the concepts that um, under, underlie the, the methods, the practices. So it's kind of a, a work that uh, uh, history, historians of astrology have, have still to be done, but of which you have already uh, began to, to do. Uh, in in a, a very remarkable measure, I have to say, because when we when we read all your books, we read about the political impact of astrology, the cultural impact of astrology, but also also we have a pretty good idea of how how it works, how were the techniques, what, uh, are, they, what are they doing in yes. practice? Yes. And the other thing that is important, and uh, I try to more or less address in my. Uh, PhD is how they learned astrology. Mm -hmm. That's a very big problem because we have no so much uh, mm, knowledge about that. Uh, we have some very brilliant programs, especially in Italy, the famous program of uh, 1405 uh, at, uh, uh, at Bologna. Yeah. But is very ambitious, but we don't know uh, if it was really uh, practice. In fact, uh, uh, is the, as the, the uh, astrological predictions, uh, the annual pred uh, astrological predictions, which is uh, supposed to be uh, put on the wall, uh, is it really a practice? Uh, we are not sure of that. We have some some more more documents about that with the uh, with the press at the end of the fifteenth century. But during the rule of the fifteenth century, the press problem it's very problematic. Uh, it, uh, it is absolutely evident that we have now uh, quite a lot of theoretical. Uh, to ties we edited, but we missed a lot of practical uh, text and practical uh, uh, documents, uh, which are not, of course, very uh, easy to study. 
of course, Simon Bell and the, the, the booklets of Simon Bell are <laughs> remarkable examples of, of that. Uh, because the, the, the part of interpretation is very big and horoscopes of, of Simon Bell, for example, uh, of the 15th century, in this magnificent collection of horoscopes, there are some comments, but they are very lit, little. They are not uh, very big astrological judgments, uh, and it's quite rare to have uh, horoscopes and uh, important uh, astrological judgments with the horoscopes. Yes, yes, it is. And this, uh, this is also um, Simon Bell and his two uh, manuscripts, one in Paris, one in Lisbon, is also an example of another thing, that is the way these ideas circulated. Mm -hmm. We still don't know why is it that one is in Paris and the mm -hmm. other. I have my suspicions because yeah. um, some of the uh, French princesses married Portuguese kings. Uh -huh. And there was this man, Jean Vigier, uh, uh, yeah. that came. You know, he was a, um, a, a disciple of a, a very good pharmacist, uh, pharmacist uh, Nicolas Demery. I think it was his name. And uh, he came with the princess, and uh, so probably because uh, in the in the book in the notebook of Simon Bell that we have here in Lisbon, it, okay. it is binded in a parchment, and in the parchment there is a testament of okay. some some Jean Vigier. Ah, interesting. That might yeah. be like an ancestor. If I can ever. get any, anything about Jean Vigier, I'll, t I'll tell you <laughs> all the things. I, I tried to uh, try really uh, to get some more uh, uh, thing about Simon Bell, but that didn't get it. Uh, unfortunately, in the case original of the, of the Bibliothèque Nationale, I, I check it for you, <laughs> but um, <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't Get maybe mm. in the university, maybe he was registered in some university. I, I really don't know if he was like a top astrologer. I think he was my, more like a middle middle yeah, range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew probably, probably around the, the, the court of the of the Bourbon, the Duke of yes, Bourbon. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting, really. They're very mysterious. You know, I, I, I'm I talk about it with uh, Olivier Matteoni, uh, uh, professor of uh, medieval history uh, at the Sorbonne, who is a very good specialist of the Duke of Bourbon in the 15th century. But unfortunately, the the the, the, the counts, the counts of the hotel of the Duke, uh, are lost. Uh. So it's very difficult to to find uh, anything very precious. Mm. Um, I think. That uh, when uh, Poole said that uh, Simon Bell was working in uh, Castro Lucio, in, uh, and he said in, in, in Limousin, uh, in fact, is is in uh, in Bourbonne, uh, not far from from Moulin. So really, uh, but it's very interesting because we have almost. Uh, the horoscope of uh, the horoscopes of almost all important uh, princes uh, of the 15th century, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I have uh, I'm just studying now a, a trio of uh, Jean de uh, Bourgogne, Com uh, Count of uh, Etamp and Nevers, uh, which is kept. At, uh, which is preserved uh, at, at Vienna uh, and uh, was partly published uh, by um, Andrea Bauer. And uh, uh, it's very interesting to see the, the whole career of, of this person and the, the, the fact that he is uh, one of the person in, in this collection is very uh, signifying. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we can take so much from these documents. Uh, well, I have to confess, I really love documents. It's what, <laughs> what I really love to work with. But, um, for instance, the, the Duke of Bourbon, Jean II de Bourbon, um, 
he was, as you know, uh, a, an enemy of Louis XI. Absolutely. Oh, first he was like an ally, but then he became an enemy. And uh, when the other, uh, the former favorite of uh, the king, Jacques d'Armagnac, mm -hmm. when he was killed, yes. the Duke of Bourbon asked to uh, ask um, a horary question, an interrogation mm -hmm. about his life. Mm -hmm. Like nine days after the Jacques d'Armagnac was killed. That's absolutely significant. Uh, I, I was afraid. <laughs> you know that they have participated to the publication of the trial of Jacques d'Armagnac uh, with uh, uh, Joël Blanchard. And it, the, 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 the trial of Jacques d'Armagnac is absolutely fascinating because he had a confessor, a Franciscan confessor, who was to uh, astrologer and more especially geomancer, mm. a specialist of geomancy. And uh, uh, in the in the trial, you we have the a paper taking uh, which is a a net a net memoir of a, a little uh, uh, memorandum of 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 geomancy, and that's interesting because there's not so much uh, Franciscan uh, astrologers at the end of the Middle Ages. Mm. And this one is very interesting. Yeah, uh, I don't it know. Was called, it was called the Guy de Briançon. Guy de Briançon. And I, 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 I can give you the. the it's a fascinating uh, trio. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are many things about uh, astrology, prophecy, mm -hmm. the prophecy of the second uh, Carlos, of the uh, Charles. Son of Charles adapted uh, to the brother of uh, Louis the uh, Eleventh, uh, and uh, it's absolutely fascinating. Source. Wow. <laughs> now this uh, is the manuscripts and this kind of thing is something. If we go in, we will never go out. Yeah. <laughs> we will never. Go out. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, I read it yesterday, <laughs> partly, because, uh, uh, well, the problem is that uh, du the Duke of Bourbon has so many astrologers. That's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, Conrad Engarter, oh, Simon de Far, si probably Simon Bell, mm -hmm. and they are not the same, the, 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 the script are totally different. Uh, Antonio Ciacuccin. Uh, an Italian, uh, well, it's, it's quite incredible for, well, it, it, it's a very important prince, but he has not the the, 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 the budget of, uh, of a king of France, uh, so it's, it's very significant and yes. interesting. It's quite interesting, because another aspect with that we know very little, we know something, of course, is how did this patronage work and how exactly would yes. these astrologers would be in the service of these, how would they hire, why would they hire certain individuals and not, not others? I, we have fragments, of course, and we have uh, your work uh, addresses this uh, uh, at, 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 at a certain extent, but we still don't know exactly how this works in terms of uh, mechanics. How? Are they hired? Is it a, a, someone who is advising the, the king, which is act, which happens to be an astrologer or someone who, who knows astrology? How exactly does this patronage and, and this uh, service to, to, to kings yeah. and dukes work? That's uh, a very big problem. I, I think that uh, we have a lot of uh, astrologers who are, who are uh, mainly physicians and. Uh, uh, of princes, and uh, they are paid uh, mainly as physician. Mm -hmm. But at some times they begin to be uh, professional astrologers. But it for for the kingdom of France, it was quite a short period. Only the second half of the fifteenth century, mm -hmm. not before and not after. And the explication of that is not so obvious. <laughs> uh, 
why? Uh, I think that the, the, the faculty of theology of Paris was the, probably one of the explications. Uh, explanation. Mm. Uh, because Paris was, it was very, a lobby, the, the lobby of the mm. intelligence was very uh, dominant in Paris. Uh, much more than in other places, much more than in Oxford, much more than in Italian universities. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, much more than in Louvain, for example, which is a, a university founded in 1425, mm -hmm. and where we can see that study of astrology, probably we don't have uh, uh, in, in town many internal documents, but we have many uh, things around that about, we can say that there are, and for example, the first uh, official astrologer of the King of France uh, uh, was a, no, uh, a former student of Louvain, not of Paris. Mm -hmm. Arnaud de la Palue. Uh, and uh, uh, this is not a hazard, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, yes. The, the connection between astrology, theology, and political issues. It's another topic that uh, I think it will go on forever. <laughs> yes. uh, one of the things returning to, 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 the, to the manuscript that I have studied, that uh, we can see in the tables, he has these tables um, from uh, uh, 1468 to 1480, mm -hmm. and uh, um, he uh, encodes, because it's codif codified, uh, certain dates. And mm -hmm. what I've noticed is that um, he um, he, 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 you know, he writes down the dates of the defeats of the Charles le Temeraire, uh, the Charles the Bold, and his the, 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 the day he died. So he was really interested in this in this topic, especially the Duke, the Duke Charles, Charles, the Duke of Bourgogne. Uh, so um, this is like um, if we go into it. Uh, we can explore the medical part, we can explore the political part, uh, and, well, I think it will go forever. And considering that the, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France has dozens of manuscripts, all of them fascinating, I don't know where we will end it. <laughs> <laughs> As regards, the manuscripts have been, at least in our experience, uh, one of the, these example charts, even if they have, as you said, just a small uh, comment. comment, sometimes a small comment is already very informative. Yes, 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 yes. very interesting. Yes. Yeah. We can say many things about only two, well, Hilek is, etc., al Kosoden and al Mutem is probably, but, etc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but I think it's worthwhile exploring, and that is one of the purposes in our future research, uh, current and future research, is to explore exactly these examples. Mm -hmm. Because I think if we, f if we have a good collection, of a good sample of examples of practice, and this can be done by time, by, by region, etc., we can really uh, know and understand what are they doing, what are they practicing, and probably then infer some information on where did they learn, what are their sources, mm -hmm. and how does it work? And I think that's a crucial uh, re well, line of research to do. Absolutely true. Yes, yes. yes. Professor, uh, your uh, future plans, uh, academic plans, can we talk about it? Uh, well, uh, just for the moment, uh, I'm uh, preparing a, a, a book uh, with 14 articles on uh, astrology and politics. And uh, I hope the book will be finished. Well, it, the book is finished. Uh, I have all, all, already the, the first proofs. And uh, I hope it will be published uh, before the end of the, of the year. After, uh, well, I have many... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Many dossiers, I'm afraid, <laughs> and uh, 
um, with uh, Christopher Lukin, we are uh, going to publish the Nativitas of uh, Richard Furnival and the commentary of uh, Peter of Limoges uh, on the Nativitas. Uh, as you know, uh, the publication uh, of uh, Henry Bat of Malin's uh, astrological uh, autobiography has been done and very well done. Uh, by uh, scholars uh, two years ago. Um, the astrological uh, uh, autobiography of uh, Richard of Fournival is only technical. Uh, there are unfortunately less uh, biographical, um, biographical details. But it's still very interesting, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I hope it, it will be useful. And uh, on a long-term uh, project, I have the publication of the six, uh, the six uh, versions of the Santillaquium uh, of the 12th century. And the difference between the translations are extremely interesting. On a point of view, uh, which is the uh, moral uh, interpretation mm -hmm. of the Arabic text between the translation, are not the same. And we have some traits of, uh, we have some uh, manifestations of uh, uh, auto censorship. Uh, auto censor it. Uh, for example, in the, uh, the the more common translation has been done by uh, Plato of Tivoli in uh, thirteen uh, in eleven thirty six, and uh, it's the more common, more than a hundred manuscripts. So you you can suppose that it's a very problematic. Uh, on the editorial point of view. But the, the other uh, main uh, translation done uh, by uh, uh, an unknown person, perhaps John of Seville, um, has uh, is less detailed on some um, morally and uh, uh, problematic points, mm -hmm. uh, especially the verbum 95, mm -hmm. where uh, the commentary, the commentary of uh, Hamad Yusuf, the pseudo Hadi, uh, says things very interesting about the sexual life of a uh, uh, general of the army of uh, Egypt in the 10th century. And, uh, well, he, he says that uh, he has... Uh, it's a, a kind of illustration of the, of the sentence uh, via sapiens, WWW Astris, because he says, in fact, I have some uh, evident, uh, the, the, the astrologer asked the question, well, you are, your, 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 your vet investments are, are not according your nature and your uh, astrological uh, determination. Why? And he says, oh, I, I was during all my life, uh, in fact, uh, was very inclined in uh, in young young man, and uh, so he, he was homosexual, and even uh, like young black uh, people, and it's very interesting. And uh, uh, the translation of Plato of Tivoli is very clear about. There was no censor, censorship at all, but in the other translation, it's 
<laughs> they, it disappears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, Richard of Fornilal, uh, if he is the author of the Speculum Astronomiae, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have this version, mm. uh, the, the version of Plato. He has the version Mundanarum uh, with uh, this kind of censorship. So, you see, uh, of course, there are many uh, philology, philological problems about this edition in uh, reports uh, to compare with the Arabic original. Uh, but there are also some uh, uh, moral problems, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's very important because the Santilloquium is really uh, a structured, a structured called text, uh, and the famous sentence uh, is we, you can see absolutely everywhere, even in the trial, trial of uh, Jacques Darmagnac, who you have, you have the sentence who appeared just uh, uh, in the uh, so it's really fascinating. <laughs> yes, uh, well, um, we have been across these variations because I'm working in a much later period, so uh, in early modern, so it's different, the, the editions are much different by then, but you still see this kind of variation in the Centilocium because we have to look what exactly are they quoting, which edition, because sometimes the sentence is completely different, the translation yeah. is utterly different and Sometimes the order of the chapters is slightly different. Yeah, also. slightly different, yeah. and you have to find, it's not 41, it's 40, because in that yeah. edition they change it for some reason, and it's still, it's quite, and it's a, a source that keeps coming up ever, again and again and again, so I, I think that will be... Uh, until until the, 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 and again, of the 20th century, it's, it's absolutely awful. <laughs> so, so, I think, well, I, I, I'm not sure that I'll be able to 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 do the edition of the of the, the most common version, that of uh, Plato of Tivoli alone, because it, uh, with hundreds of manuscripts, uh, I have some problem. But uh, you see, I have many lot of work for my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we will be waiting. For the books and for the, the future editions, mm -hmm. yes. we'll be waiting like hawks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and now I don't know that we talk about your, your plans. I would also like to you for you to comment, please, on on your experience with the development of the discipline of the, the history of astrology because uh, it, it has suffered a lot of changes in the, in the last decades. Uh, yes, that's a, a, an important point. Uh, in France, a very rationalist country, as you, as you know, uh, I was quite alone, uh, I think, uh, working on this subject. Uh, in, in the academic uh, paysage, uh, it was really a problem. And uh, the study of Simon Farr was very hard. So I'll, I had really my PhD, I, I was about uh, six, seven years on absolutely terrible. And uh, this was very, very difficult. Uh, in the uh, Anglo-Saxon countries, fortunately, it's different. And uh, um, fortunately, too, uh, we are in France now a little more numerous than one or two <laughs> to uh, study uh, that kind of, of, of thing. But uh, uh, the rationalist Petrugé uh, is rather pro is present uh, until now. So it's a, a real problem. But I'm uh, very happy 
to see you and to see other scholars working uh, on this subject uh, all in all the world. Uh, so uh, in the uh, United States, in England, in uh, Central Europe, uh, etc. The problem is that a lot of uh, specialists are mostly externalists and it's okay. a real problem because a, a strictly external point of view it's not um, very, very useful uh, if we, we want to progress. Uh, that's a, a problem because uh, the investment of uh, technical astrology is a very hard investment. It is really uh, uh, hard. So uh, uh, the, the, there are obvious uh, progress uh, on philological studies, on edition and translation of sources, but the many, many things to do on practice, on publishing text of practice, of publishing horoscopes, predictions, uh, all pseudo predictions, <laughs> uh, but uh, to know if it is a pseudo prediction, we have to publish it before, etc. Mm. A lot to do. Yeah. It's one of the fields that we intend to explore is the internal, internal yeah. part of the song. Yeah, yeah. And now sometimes right. it's like you were saying. It's uh, sometimes you have we have seen. People doing a wonderful research uh, from an historical, philological point of view, and then they sometimes miss an important point and the point that what we a key point important for their re for the research just because it, they are not aware of the it's technical. It's like a blind details. spot. Yeah. They have yeah, yeah. they don't know the technique. They have like blind spots. They don't get these few ideas, and sometimes they are very good historians, very competent, very uh, dedicated. But if they have the technical blind spot, sometimes they miss very interesting yeah. things in documents. Yeah, I, I usually give the examples like someone is studying a mathematical manuscript without knowledge of the mathematics that is being practiced at that time. So a lot of thing, a lot of important information will be lost because the person doesn't know the language and doesn't understand the subject. Um, although it can still do a good job in, a, in other aspects. And there, yeah. there are often, the, we can find many competent uh, jobs, many competent articles in uh, the history of astrology, even without this, because people focus on the political aspect or religious or, or even philological, uh, but still mm -hmm. there is this part that is mm -hmm. missing. We already have a few words, uh, yeah. a few words. We yeah, already have a few very good ones, I have to say, and but there's a lot to explore. Yeah. Um, and, and another topic that I would like to, to ask you, if, if you don't mind, is that, um, in, in related to this, is that perhaps what is needed is to create a discipline of history of astrology which can uh, marry this com the technical and in, in, in internalist component with the externalist component. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, because, for example, um, most of our research, our personal research, has been focused on the history of astrology, but within the history of science. Mm -hmm. There are other people who do it with, uh, with, within art history, within history in general, or cultural history, or... History um, of medicine. History of medicine. Mm -hmm. and there are... There, are, there is this fragmentation, and for example, I was uh, the other day uh, we were thinking of talking about this, which was if one wants to study, um, for example, the practice of astrology and how it developed, for example, 18th, 19th century, and even 20th century, which is still a valid historical research, it cannot be done, for example, in the history of science because by then it doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if we had a more cohesive discipline of history of science, uh, history of astrology, sorry, perhaps then uh, it would be easier to um, to envelop all these areas of research into one. 
also kind of, um, so, um, totally agree. I think it would be very useful to have a, a, an, an academic support specialized on this field uh, with people coming from other disciplines, uh, of course, and especially uh, astronomy, etc. But it, it's very interesting to see, for example, that we have a lot, I think, very, very important task about the history of Arabic uh, astrology. Mm -hmm. And most of the Arabists are specialized on astronomy uh, and only on, on the uh, astronomical part of the astrological treatise. And because uh, it seems not to be so sufficiently serious for their ministry or, or so. And that's a real problem. Uh, and in France, uh, the external lobbies, uh, externalist lobbies are, are dominant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, for example, we have uh, Nicolas Velparo, uh, who is a very good uh, internalist uh, on the uh, uh, study of um, magic and uh, uh, the history of magic and the history of ast astrology, mm -hmm. but uh, we, ha we have He's quite isolated uh, in the academic, uh, I mean, the, the generation uh, le less older than me. Uh, well, I have a very good student uh, who is a, a keeper uh, of a manuscript at the Bibliothèque Nationale, who has done a, an excellent PhD on the Annual pronostications of the 15th century. Alexandre Tour is absolutely marvelous, but uh, it's an exception. <laughs> 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 Maybe we could also interview Alexandre Tour. Uh, oh yes, I, I think it would be very, very interesting. Uh, we uh, are aware of his work. Yes, I yeah. his work. And, uh, but this would be useful. Uh, people think, and sometimes they argue, that the, the, the internalist study of astrology would be interesting only for half a dozen historians. But we would argue that uh, this uh, was uh, such an important part of mm -hmm. pre-modern culture mm -hmm. that uh, this study would be useful for uh, medievalists, uh, people who study antiquity, um, People who study the history of medicine, people who study literature, art, art iconography, uh, everything, uh, because it was such an important part, such uh, an intrinsic part of culture. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem sometimes is if they believe it or not. It's not that is really not the point. It's yeah. part of culture. Yeah. So that is that is our um, our approach to the to the to yeah. this topic. But you you have the same opinion that the. Warburg tradition. You are in the Warburg tradition, so uh, you you can feel uh, how I think about the Warburg tradition. It's a marvelous tradition. We are absolutely all in the Warburg library. Yes. Yes. People <laughs> as us. <laughs> so I'm absolutely agree with you. Yes, yes. yes. So, it is an experience. Yes. <laughs> the, the Warburg library is always in our hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, true. It's true. Okay. Um, so, Professor, I think uh, we we've we've talked about this. I thank you very much for for thank you. for the interview because it was wonderful. It was a pleasure. All this. Um, it was especially in this time with different difficult time. <laughs> exactly, yes. we're all isolated at home. <laughs> all, we are doing all these productions, very homemade productions, <laughs> but I think they're important. And, and they are very important. And uh, we hope to to perhaps uh, we can arrange another time to discuss other topics or to discuss okay. specific work. Whenever your book comes out, please let us know, and we perhaps can. Okay. Do okay. 
an interview on that topic specifically. Pleasure. Or, book, or if you have uh, an interesting document or an interesting idea that you would like to share, please let us know. It okay. would be a pleasure to have you again in our podcast. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. For now. And see you next. <laughs> thank you. Bye.